places we don't dive. As it turns out, we dive in approximately 27% of the area. So if everyone carried a lion tamer and just eradicated the ones they saw, the population would remain is at zero. That's very important. And we just have to get more people in the Army. And yeah. the Army, I want to stress on that, and Jen, you elaborate on this, the Lion Tamer Army, getting people to understand that, you know, we have to control this population here, right? Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things that, unfortunately, it's not the fish's fault, and it's not, it's not the reef's fault, but if we don't do something about it, our reefs are going to be nothing but lionfish. They kill everything. They'll, they'll eat every fish that's on the reef. So, I mean, I'm not into the spearfishing, but, you know, I'm out there, so why not? She, it's really she does simple. like to eat them, though, so yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to show you. And, and you on the boat actually have a, a unique way. You, you, you have a log of how many people have, have, <laughs> right, have right, killed right. lionfish. How many have you killed? Um, I, uh, now, you have to consider I didn't even see one until last September, but since September I've killed 502 wow. now. What we do on the boat is on the windows, we keep track of everybody that's killed lionfish and we keep their score, uh, people that are in the lion tamer army, I like to call it. So uh, we have uh, two ladies that are very environmental reef huggers that we call it, and they're both over 100 fish apiece. Mm. Uh, we have people that absolutely never even attempted, and as soon as I show them one time, what to do, they've killed a few. So there's some hope as, if, as we train people and educate them that these fish have got to go. There is some hope, I believe, that uh, we'll be able to keep the population down. All right, now that we've killed them, filleting them yes. and, and eating them. And I want to talk about this. You actually, as we saw in the video opening up this segment, you, you can fillet them and eat them right oh, on the boat, right? I serve yeah. them on the boat as a, just as a, a matter of education, just to show people that they won't hurt you. And most people don't, don't, don't know this, but the fact that they have toxin in them, they think, okay, I can't eat that, but that's wrong, That's right? a very good point, Jay, because what happens is they do have a venom in them, but it's only in the spines. It's not like a blowfish. Yeah. A blowfish has the venom in their liver, and if you eat it and it's not prepared properly, it could kill you. And people die every year from eating blowfish or fugu, as the Japanese people call it. This fish, once you uh, fillet it, there's nothing wrong with it. it makes a, it's a very tender fillet very similar to hogfish uh, as a white meat, but you have to consider they don't have much muscle tone, so it's even more tender. Very nice fish. I'm going to fillet this while you're chatting just so you can see. And, and obviously, when you do fillet it, you want to stay away from the, uh, from the spines. But if you just take a quick cut down this way, and then a cut just to pierce the skin. And Jen, you've, you've seen this on the boat, oh right? My All the time. So this happens right after you catch them. You bring them right up and they fillet them right on the boat. Oh yes, it's the best sushi I've ever had. And I mean, it doesn't taste fishy. It's, I'm surprised it's not in every single sushi restaurant from here all the way up the coast. Do you think more sushi restaurants will start picking up on this? I really hope they do because it would be a shame to just kill them and have them go to waste because mm -hmm. people need to realize that they can eat them, mm -hmm. that they are delicious. They don't taste fishy at all. And there's a million recipes that you can use. Mm -hmm. I mean, and how much meat can you get from the lionfish? Um, I had a full meal off of just one, and it wasn't even, it was one probably about maybe half that size. But as you can see, it's a, it's a nice size filet. Yeah. Once you get it scored, you can just pull the skin off like if you were cleaning a, a dolphin, a mahi-mahi dolphin, mm -hmm. not a dolphin dolphin. So that comes right off. And then you've just got a got little filet to work with. And it's pretty easy. It makes a nice... It's a pretty good Look size filet right easy, there. Yeah. Easy, Real easy. nice white meat, and easy to work with. and. And you there just you fillet it. that up, Randy, you can put it with some sauce and eat it, right? Well, there's a lot of things you could do, but uh, to make life easy, Reef, who's uh, one of the leaders in lionfish mm -hmm. eradication, that's reef.org, they've come up with a lionfish cookbook. And it's got some great that's recipes. Exciting. My favorite is the lionfish ceviche, because this just works real well in ceviche. And uh, you can get this at reef.org and it'll give you 40 different ways of uh, cleaning them and eating them, so that works out pretty good. It's so interesting to see, you know, to think about how, how invasive this species is, to think about the fact that we've killed so many of them now, but now that there are cookbooks out teaching us <laughs> how to make this, I, they've become such a part of our, our, our society, I guess, if you will. So many divers are now encountering them that we're finding ways to cook them and eat them. Uh, where where is the next step here? I mean, do you think we're going to be able to finally come to grips with the fact that are we going to be able to control this population or are we going to constantly be fighting one step behind? We're going to constantly be fighting it. But what will happen is as more people learn to eat them and as more restaurants learn to serve them, um, it will become a commodity like anything else. Once people see that right there, that, that nice filet, and they see 10 lionfish, they're going to think, 
well, why don't I just go catch 10 lionfish and have that for dinner? It's even better than having a couple of lobsters. So what, I'm, what I like to focus on is trying to get people to eat them. I go around to restaurants all the time and I say, if you serve this, I'll supply them to you for free. And we've had a few uh, restaurants interested. I'm gonna, while you're working, I'm gonna show you one little thing that I show the sushi restaurants as far as the presentation. It's the filet uh, and the presentation of how you put these on the right. plate, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, have you seen this in any restaurants, Jen, when you go out or? I'm surprised that I haven't. Um, mm. I just, I wish that there were because it would be the first thing that I would order if I were in the mood for fish because right. it just has such a light taste. I mean, it's, it's like buttery, it's rich. And like Randy had said before, it has no natural predators, but those predators also include um, anything that they might have in the gills like uh, what you would have in local reef fish, like parasites or anything like that. This has none of that. So it's All probably right. the safest sushi that you could possibly eat fresh right off the bat. Well, it looks fantastic. While Randy is finishing that up, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk more about the future of this very invasive species and what it will take for us to stop them. Back in a moment. And welcome back to Ion South Florida. We continue our discussion in this last segment with Randy Jordan and Jen Folia on the lionfish and just how bad it's gotten in our waters. We've talked about how to hunt them and how to eat them. I want to talk about the future of this species and what it really means uh, for us here in South Florida. Uh, what will it take to stop the species from continuing to invade our waters? Well, it's going to take more people killing them. It's going to take more people understanding that it's not, I mean, they don't want to kill fish, but this fish has got to go. That's all it's going to take is if, if everybody kills the ones they see, we'll keep the population down and we'll be okay. A recent article in Forbes.com magazine stated that they are gaining a foothold at the most invasive species. The article went on to say the extent and speed with which lionfish have spread has been unprecedented. Lionfish has pretty much have blanketed the Caribbean in the three short years that they found them in there, more than 30 species have been sighted almost off the coast of Florida alone. Those are alarming statistics. And when you hear them, Jen, what comes to mind when you hear that? I think that we all, like Randy had just said, that we all need to be more, um, more aware of everything in the sense of just, you know, using something like, you know, the lion tamer to be able to go out there. If we are going to dive to, you know, help to eradicate Unfortunately, it's, it's the standard equipment. You should yeah. just have some device with you when you go diving. You yeah. see a lionfish, kill yeah, it. Yeah, just boom, kill it. It's like picking up a beer cans, you know? Right. Yeah. The idea here is our local <laughs> reefs. That's one way to look at it, right? The idea that's here is awesome. that, or picking up the butts, cigarette yeah. butts. The reefs are suffering, and that's the most important yeah. point I think we have to make. It's that debate out there that, you know, we don't want to kill the lionfish, but yet if we don't, they're going to kill the reefs. And Absolutely. Isn't that the bottom line, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they eat everything. There'll be nothing out there, no mm -hmm. fish at all. Nothing. Mm -hmm. it's, you're going to see a reef. You might see a few sharks, and then you'll see lionfish, and that'll that's be it. about it. Let's talk about where they've spread. We know they're off the coast of Florida. We know where they've come from. Where are they going? Are they in the Keys? Are they in the Gulf of Mexico? Where, what other areas haven't seen them? What are the areas we will see them? They're so thick in the yeah. Bahamas that they're actually warning bathers to be careful when they walk out on the rocks that they might step on a lionfish. That's how yeah. thick they are. So especially in the Bahamas, Jamaica, Cuba, everywhere in the Caribbean, all the way down to South America, and then all the way up the coast, uh, up into North Carolina. Some of those wrecks and old submarines off North Carolina is where we found the absolute largest lionfish. So some of them are as big as uh, three feet long mm -hmm. and weighing, weighing four pounds. That's a big fish. The, the, the largest one I've seen is about 16 inches and about two pounds. Uh, so they're, they're getting big quick. And now, like I said, before they were just little small ones. Now they're all what I call breeder size. So. And I think in the uh, Keys and it, well, actually in, in the Bahamas, I know they have lionfish derbies where they actually have these, mm -hmm. all these divers that go out and try and hunt them. They have cash prizes for this. Will we see more of this happen? Yeah, with, there's a, a reef.org sponsors a lot of these derbies and there's one for Green Turtle Key mm -hmm. coming up in June. Um, but we're going to be holding the first Palm Beach County uh, Lionfish Rodeo. The top prize is going to be over $2,000, but there'll be Sweet. a total of more than $5,000 in prizes. Don't have a date set for it yet. Got to work with the reef people and figure out exactly when to make sure everything's safe and everyone understands what they're doing. But that'll be coming up real soon. And I think we'll probably see more of that. Jen, you've had a lot of uh, interest, certainly out in the environment, underwater with the, the lionfish. Uh, I know you're working on a new pilot show coming up. Tell us more about that and your interactions with this and that with your new show. Um, well, I was just inspired because um, just being a lover of animals as I am, and I do so much wildlife rescue, I came up with a show idea um, that has a really cool twist to it. 
it's information on invasive species and endangered species and how to eradicate them, help to control them and everything, but with a funny twist on it, like a character-based thing. Each one has its own theme, so. I love your name, Jungle Diva, right? Jungle yeah. Diva, yeah. that's This right. is the Jungle Diva, yeah. That, that works out well. And yeah. in a few remaining moments that we have right now, Randy, you know, when you come on the boat, is it so important to really educate these divers when they're on the boat? When yeah. you guys give the dive briefings, is it now a part of the dive briefings? Absolutely, I, I want yeah. them to know that they're not gonna kill you, that it's okay to kill the lionfish. Uh, not to be afraid of them, you know, that we, we still are the, 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 the ultimate predator. We still are in charge down there. And I just want them, people to know that you can eat them. And I think through education that everyone will be more active and more proactive in getting rid of the species. Randy Jordan, Jen Foley, thank you so much for your time thank you. and your thank interest you. in the subject matter. Great information. Mm -hmm. We'll see you out on the water. And that wraps up another edition of Eye on South Florida. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week right here on Fox 29.